irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to LA Talk Radio. You're listening to The Inner Voice with Dr. Fujran Zain, only on LA Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Fujan Zain, and welcome to The Inner Voice Show. This is a show about you, about everything that matters in your life. I bring the experts um, in their field to let you know about the jewel of their knowledge. And we speak about all that matters in your heart. So today, I am so excited to have two of my great friends, one in here and one on the phone. And we're going to talk about the role of women and who we are as women and why is it important for all of us to be together supporting each other and um, having this beautiful bond not that it's just going to be for us it's going to help everyone but there's an um, there's a bonding that it's needed to empower each other in a world that at times it doesn't empower us so be with us, and we're going to be together talking to Nushin Mishkati and Mariam Khosravani and talking about the wonderful Association of Women's Leadership that has been going on for about eight years and uh, or more. We'll talk about the with the founder and the president, and uh, we'll be right back with Nushin Mishkati and Mariam Khosravani. We call to the angels of the light and to those allies and guardians of truth. From the east, from the south, from the west and from the north, from the great above and the great below, and to the great loving creator within, we ask that you bring divine light, divine love and divine knowledge. May your presence be felt within all of our hearts. Welcome back to the Inner Voice Show. I have Nushin Mishkati with me and um, in studio. Welcome, Nushin. Thank you for having me. Good afternoon or morning to all of your listeners. Yes. And I have Mariam Khosravani online with us. Um, hi, Mariam. Are you there? Uh, hi. Yes, yes, I am here. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. Well, you're, you're with our listeners, so it's wonderful to have all three of us here. Um, so I want, I'm going to actually ask each one of you to a little bit talk about yourself. And uh, I know, Mariam John, you are the, um, uh, the founder and the uh, president of uh, the Iranian-American Women's Leadership Program and Foundation. And the reason I say program, because it actually started first with amazing conferences, and we have one coming up April 29th. And um, 
And I know that both uh, uh, Nushin Mashkati and I have been uh, a sole supporter of uh, your cause and the cause that has cr gotten created. And uh, we own it with you, and not only as your supporter, but also own it with you. So say a little bit more about yourself and what got you to um, uh, have this desire to, uh, for the creation of an amazing association. And then we'll come back to uh, Nushin Mishkati and about who you are and how you have uh, become a commissioner, someone who's really supporting um, women around uh, Los Angeles area and Beverly Hills area and your affiliation uh, with the uh, association. Go ahead, Maya. Oh, thank you so much for that opportunity. I'm very excited, very delighted to be on your program. Um, as you know, we have started these conferences in 2011. Our first two conferences was under umbrella of Coastline Community College Foundation. And as you know, I'm an executive director for the foundation of the college, and uh, we do a lot of conferences for college, you know, educating, obviously, the community members. And um, I ask our college if we can offer the same similar or at least similar conferences to Iranian women, Iranian American women in Orange County. So we started it that way. And then after two conferences, it was a very successful a sold out events. And we just thought that we need to take this to the next level. As um, you might remember, so many community members start contacting us and asking us when would be the next conference and other members of our community in other states um, nationwide were calling us, sending emails. So we thought about establishing uh, an independent organization, foundation, a nonprofit organization, and start offering these conferences to our community members all over the nation. Mm -hmm. So in 2012, uh, we established Iranian American Women Foundation. And uh, mainly our tagline and our goal was to inspire, to empower, and to connect Iranian American women all over the world. Wonderful. And, yep. Thank you. Um, Nushin Meshkati, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, thank you again for having me here. Um, I um, came to this country when I was 15 um, as a little girl, not so little, but you know, I felt little in a big country not knowing the language. Uh, went to high school and then pursued my college. And um, I always felt uh, the necessity of helping others because uh, when I arrived, feeling so helpless, um, uh, although I had my family with me, but um, it just um, not knowing the system, not knowing um, how to go about. So I just, I started becoming active in community uh, from the young age. And uh, when I got married and had children, tried to stay active in their um, schools, I uh, became, I ran for Board of Education and I was one of the first uh, elected, uh, women elected to the office. Um, uh, in the United States, um, so I was proud of that, but uh, I was more proud because I was able to make a difference in children's mm -hmm. life. And from there, I get connect, got connected more with um, with women, um, you know, um, Iranian women who were parents in our schools and who didn't know the system and maybe felt intimidated getting involved, trying to help them learning about the system and getting more involved. And then I came across uh, Mariam Jun and learned about the um, Iranian American Women Foundation and tried to be um, as much help as I can in that organization. I'm actually active with many different women and girls organization. I am uh, uh, a, a member uh, on uh, Visionary Women. Actually, I just came from there. They had a very powerful uh, meeting uh, with uh, women trying to make a difference in other parts of the world. And if there is an uh, opportunity, I'll share what's happening there. Uh, but um, And then uh, with an organization called Girls Inc. Uh, 
um, where we help the inner city schools, um, helping girls to learn about their abilities and uh, making use of their abilities um, in many different uh, ways. I have my education in uh, computer science and engineering school I, from USC, so I work in uh, electronics. I work for um, a laboratory of NASA, and um, I know how hard it is for women to get involved in um, in sciences because they um, they just a lot of times they feel intimidated. They they don't think they can, and I try to bring that portion of it STEM program to the inner city, city schools and empower the girls to get involved. Uh, but nothing is more satisfying than giving back and helping others. So that's basically why I try to do what I do. Wonderful. The question that keeps popping up, and I would like to ask both of you, why do you think that we need to consistently create associations or inspiration for women, uh, whether they're in, uh, Iranian American? And I, you know, part of why we're here together is because we're all, the three of us are Iranian American. Um, but how come? How come? There, are, there needs to be a program uh, that really mm -hmm. concentrates on women and empowering them and inspiring them and um, bringing them into a space. Um, Maria, would you sure. like to start with that? Sure. Sure. I think, to be honest with you, whenever someone asks me this question, first of all, it was a great question, I, I always look at it as a shortcut. I look at it as, you know, I always believe that educating women is really educating the family. And then after that, obviously, it's educating the community. And that's what I call it shortcut, because who is the person in the family who brings everybody to the table? It's a mother, it's a sister, it's a daughter. So I always believe educating a woman, it's the most important um things in the family because after that it's it's easy because that mother can educate the kids and um the neighbors and the communities and if they get involved and if they get engaged in uh, civic activities if they get into in philanthropy work in anything they do the family members will follow them their kids will follow their footsteps that's why it has been very important to me to educate and get engaged them in different activities in the, within the either in our organization or any other organization. So you just look at all the charities, all the nonprofit organizations in the U.S. or probably in the whole world. You're going to see the name of women and board of directors and different committees, probably more than maybe men because of their passion, because of how much they care for different causes, and they are the ones who are bringing others engaged. And that's what I'm hoping. Wonderful. That's what I'm hoping that we can achieve through our seminars and conferences and sessions at our conferences. Thank you. Um, I agree with Mariam Jun. Uh, the um, fact of the matter is um, the approach is education educating the world about what's happening in the world. Now, as you said, because we are Iranian-American women, we uh, get um, more absorbed with the, uh, with the group that we can relate with. But the fact of the matter is education is the key to um, making the world a better place. And uh, mothers could be the best teachers. Um, because they're the ones that, uh, that have the first uh, touch with the kids. And as long as we educate them to educate their children, we can have better men and more understanding men in the society too. Because I think the role of, the role of women in the uh, society can only be understood and appreciated if men could understand it. And the only way we can, uh, you know, expand that uh, education in, as Maya Jones said, in a shortcut way, is to bring the women, and uh, you know, because those are the uh, key elements in society who can broadcast the information and the message that we want in a easier uh, and a more um, heartfelt way. 
uh, because as we know, women are a lot more in touch with their heart that, than, than men. So when, when you have a heartfelt message sent, it gets absorbed easier. So with the hope of that, we can educate the world better. And the other thought that came up for me is also that I think that it's important um, for women not only to embrace their power, but also for their power not to be threatening to women nor men. For uh, many times as we have raised uh, to take care of women has to be because of uh, a victimization, because of violence, because of, uh, the, for example, the Me Too movement or Never Again movement, uh, which finally is like all women are um, rising together in order to uh, stop something um, and a behavior that was for many years acceptable and it was acceptable to men and it somehow got created acceptable because of that culture to women and um, women are raising and coming together and creating a space of no we're not going to have this but I think on the other side uh, what for example this uh, Iranian American uh, Leadership Foundation is doing is also to look at the strength of women um, when I look at you, Nusheen, who's sitting here, and your experience, when I look at Maryam Shabani, when I, you know, I experience what I experienced coming as immigrants and rising above all that it has been, and um, yet creating a power where that power necessarily is not uh, a fearful power for uh, the family, for other women, or the men. And this is what creates the beauty, because the power comes from uh, love and caring and uh, the uh, the space of unity and togetherness and growth mm -hmm. versus the power needing to be a power struggle between you know feminine or the, the masculine energy and uh, knocking somebody down because I need to go up uh, and not necessarily the power showing up just from anger sometimes we need anger in order to rise <laughs> but not necessarily uh, a power of rising from anger but rising from um, love and growth and uh, expansion. Um, so I think it's an important for us to come together also from that space. You were smiling over there, mm -hmm. although I can't see you. I can hear you smile, Maria. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know me so well. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, Fushan, yeah, exactly as you said, and that's what I was hoping to achieve uh, by offering these platform this platform and these conferences because our goal was to really acknowledge and uh, recognize contributions of Iranian American women to the society um, and also um, I wanted the younger generation to be inspired to see what their mothers sisters, cousins, they had done and contributed to the society. And if you, as you said, it's about empowerment. It's not about um, playing victim in the society, but taking responsibility for who we are and what we can achieve. So, yeah, as you said, you said it so well. <laughs> And um, I don't know if this is what Nushin can think, if she can think about anything else. No, I think, I think you're absolutely, absolutely right because, um, you know, talking about inspiring and empowering, and I think when we come in one place, working, uh, working toward a good cause and a good goal, it's great, but when you work in vacuum, you only see what you see right in front of your eyes. But when you work in a group and you, you hear others, what they do and how much difference they make, you really get inspired. I mean, you know, a lot of people tell me that I inspire them by what I do, but the fact of the matter is when I'm around them, I get inspired by them. So the, mm -hmm. so having a group, a foundation, a, a um, you know, circle like this that you can come together and share, um, you really help open people's mind a lot more and Although a lot of us who are part of these type of circles, we are on the right track knowing that we're doing good and to make a difference in the society, but when we see each other, we learn more from each other and get more inspired and more empowered so we can do a lot more. 
Mm -hmm. I know that this um, foundation started, as uh, you said, about with conferences and bringing uh, women together, uh, teaching, bringing the teaching element and uh, showing that each woman, how did they rise to their um, position? Uh, looking at their strength and um, valuing their their strength and resiliency and sharing it with other women and young women in how to tap into their own strength and moving up. And out of that, mentorship programs have started, and I've been a mentor um, for um, other young uh, women who have been in the field of psychology. Um, so mentorship programs are there and there's a lot that the foundation does um, for women and now also men because recently we've also had uh, men come in to the organization and have benefited not only from the education of the seminars but also um, mentorship and mentee uh, programs and internships. Um, Maya Khosravani, would you like to talk a little bit more about those programs? Of course, sure. Um, our mentorship program is open to both men and women. Um, and I'm very excited that we, last year we launched this program first in Washington, D.C., and then in Northern California, Orange County and lately in New York. These are the locations that we have our chapters. And it has been very successful. In 2017, we had about 43 mentees. So what happens is these mentees who are going to school or you know graduating from universities all over the nation, they fill out the application and we will match them with the mentor who is an expert in their field. Um, and they meet they talk, uh, they share um, any way that mentor can help the mentee to achieve his or her goals, uh, either it's a career-wise or education or anything else that the mentee needs. Um, and this program, it's a one-year, 12-month program. After one year, they can choose to continue or they can just um, end their mentorship program. I'm hoping that maybe in two years when you and I talk on this program, we'll be able to say that we have hundreds of mentees because that really is the purpose of this organization. We want to help the younger generation in our community to achieve what they are capable of and they believe in themselves more than anything else. That's what I'm hoping to do. I want them to believe that the sky is the limit. And there is any, anything they can do, anything they want to do is possible to them. So um, this is something that it's very close to my heart. Being, you know, being an educator, being someone who works for a community college, obviously uh, this is close to my heart. And I'm hoping that we can bring, we can benefit our own community members. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Nushin, when you talked about women in technology and um, uh, how do you see the mentorship program having some ability to create more um, of this path for women if they wanted to go into technology, aerospace, and engineering at large? Um, I think it's uh, very useful because um, a lot of people look um, when, when a lot of kids, as they're looking uh, into their future, they have a certain assumption that certain places are hard to get, are hard to get into. But when they step into the uh, mentorship program and the uh, internship program, uh, they realize, uh, first of all, they can experience and see uh, if they like what they see because sometimes you dream and then when you step into that dream you see this is not what you dreamt uh, so uh, it's a um, it's a good experience for a lot of children and unfortunately I mean through the um, uh, the IWF. Uh, we're uh, reaching out to some people. I've I've had a couple of people approaching me and uh, talking to me about the program. I have arranged for them to come and visit, at least even if they don't get into the internship, come and visit the um, the place of work and see what is it that we do, and if it uh, uh, brings excitement into their um, 
part so that they can pursue uh, that field because when you go to aerospace, you you know there's so much variety. You can get into physics, you can t- get into elect- uh, electronics, engineering, or programming, or anything. So th- they're they're mechanical um, or or anything. So th- uh, when, once they come in, they may realize oh there are a lot more uh, than they can do um, um, than in, in than just seeing it as a uh, big picture. So I think these type of internship mentorship programs that. Uh, are offered through the different circles such as IWF are the best thing that we can do for the younger generation because we um, empower them and give, give them the ability to taste their dream and uh, realize if that's where they want to go or, or they want to change path. I work a lot with uh, young adults who have finished their high school and they are freshmen and sophomore um, or throughout the college and some of them are graduating. And one of the biggest fears uh, in that age, and you know it has the highest amount of um, anxiety and depression, uh, is because life was structured. Um, You knew where to go every morning. You were at school with the same friends in the same location. And you come out, and now you have to be a grown-up. You have to act like a grown-up. You're now entitled to the laws in the same way that the grown-ups are. And then you have to find your space. You're no longer a child. So many things that, as an adult, we look at a child, you cannot pull anymore. Um, and yet you don't have all the skills out there. And the, uh, and everything has become so vast that uh, it's fear it, fear producing it's really hard for many of the young generation to figure out what is the best career for them and that fear sometimes puts them into apathy of the, the world is so big that I can never become anybody and I'll just wait for my 15 minute fame somewhere in Instagram and then be done with it and I've watched the um, and even when they have to go through internship programs it is so much um, hard for them in order to create a, a connection to go to any company and say I want to intern and even if they go there in the big companies what happens to them is they get lost into the process of uh, this corporation where nobody, they're just kind of like thrown in the big corporation. And what I've noticed is the mentorship program in the IAW uh, really works with the person where um, they sit down, look at where their vision is, how they can contribute. It's almost like somebody holds their hand and takes them, you know, step by step to the program. And then actually after the mentorship, they actually put them into an internship program. So it's such a beautiful um hand holding space until uh, kind of um, the, the the bird can fly on the own as if their wings are getting strained and then they can grow and this is something that I've really seen and enjoyed uh, being part of this program anything else you want to say about the mentorship program Maya? I know but uh, you just mentioned regarding internship which is part of our mentorship to internship program and we are um, we are glad we are lucky to have over three to four thousand members nationwide because that's how we can find internship for our students because through the network of women who are there to help us and support us and support the next generation of leaders in our community, uh, we are hoping to find internship in different fields. Uh, either it's in education, aerospace, engineering, um, medical, you just name it. So um, I think this networking organization is a key for us to find qualified mentors, but at the same time, um, these mentors, we are hoping to help us to um, find internship positions for our mentees. As you know, it is the most difficult job in your career is the first one. Yes. For so many reasons, including what you just explained. So, um, so this is part of the program you're offering. Right. And this is the second year, so hopefully in a few years we can um, have many, many, many more mentees and mentors in our program. And uh, I know that the IAWF also does a lot of uh, entrepreneurship where you... Um, and 
help other organizations, which are also nonprofit, uh, individuals who are in need, uh, students who are in need, families who are in need, whether they uh, have come in um, through the immigration process and they're uh, struggling or some mishap has happened as an illness or something which creates um, uh, hardship for them. And um, you have opened up uh, also a part of this organization that creates support um, as that. Yes, yeah. we call that our circle of giving, uh, which is within our organization, uh, through contribution which has been made to this circle. Um, it enables us to support many nonprofit organizations, um, including Iranian American or non Iranian American. It doesn't matter for us. But um, mainly our donors are our members who contribute to us. And um, we try to help our community members, women in our community, women and kids, children, uh, through different organizations, which that is their specialties, because we are, it's not ours. Ours is mainly education and a conference. But because of the need within our community, we get calls, we get emails almost on a daily basis from community members that they need our support. They need someone to just listen to them. Fortunately, there are so many wonderful organizations in our community, such as Pars Equality mm-hmm. Center, which helps newcomers, helps immigrants. But what we can do is, we, uh, through the resources we have, we put these individuals in touch with different organizations, which might be able to help them probably even better than we can do. And for those who need financial support, if there is something urgent happens in their lives, or um, or if it's a scholarship we need to provide to a student, of course, we'll be there for the community and help them. We were actually in the same space um, in a meeting Saturday where I know that the IAWF is uh, supporting to raise funds for uh, a woman who um, her face was uh, uh, burned and destroyed by acid and somebody th- uh, threw acid. And uh, we were talking about that and someone um, who was at the meeting suddenly raised her hand and said, I have an organization, I have a university research group who are actually doing this, and they're looking uh, for someone to um, be able to support and help. And this is what happens. Like, it happened in front of us. We were all sitting there and just hands joined suddenly with this excitement Mm -hmm. of, wow, um, someone you know somebody who is in need, and then suddenly another person has those resolution for that need, and then it all comes together. And this is the beauty of networking and I think that the networking sometimes we only look at it from a business perspective but not only that that's important to have those types of networks as business but it's this is a uh, this is a bigger concept of networking in um, how do we put our hands together as a society um, I have um, a model that I'm researching, and I remember Ariana, who's a director of um, a charter school in uh, South Central LA. Uh, you know, we started talking, and uh, I said, uh, "I'll, you know, I'm more than happy to come and do the pilot study with this program." And then she said, "Absolutely, I love it. Let's do it." So, like within two weeks, we're going to start that program together. So it's this type of togetherness that we all come together in order to bring the uh, the jewel of knowledge and resources together for all that needs to be together. And Nushin, can you talk um, also about how um, your way of being and giving, not only to this association, but to the other ones that you were talking about, um, creates an amazing result in your life and others? I, as as you said, it's a matter of matching uh, who needs and pe- person that can help together. So as you become active in community, um, you know, and I have tried to stay active in many different ways, um, I come across a lot of different um, situations. You know, when when I was more active in the schools, you had parents that had children with learning disability that didn't know 
how to help their children. And uh, you basically direct them. It's a matter of uh, becoming a, um, a sort of like directory of, of where um, uh, points, uh, help points are, uh, you know, and, and you just, the more you become active, the more organizations you get involved and unfortunately time is the only problem because there's only 24 hours of it in a day uh, you but but the, the good thing is if more and more people uh, start thinking to assign a portion of their time during the day to give uh, it's not it doesn't have to be financially a lot of people cannot aff afford financial giving but a giving experience, giving of their experience, giving of their time, uh, is just as impactful as um, you know financial help. You know the good thing about those that can afford financially is they can enable more hands. But each one of us have two hands that can uh, use and and give. So if we can encourage by by inspiring, by getting in these groups and and as the seminars are open to public, as they come and hear. Uh, the inspiring people that what they have done. If we can inspire even two per people out of each seminar to be giving, uh, we've done a lot for the society because um, there are a lot more foundations like IAWF. Um, you know, as I said, I'm involved with like three or four of them outside IAWF that I can see. So um, we just have to continue inspiring and educating and expanding and, and you know, the spreading the, the message uh, that we are as human beings, the only way we can make the world a better place is by holding each other's hand and trying to help each other get to uh, the destination that we're trying to get. There is no point of um, uh, knocking each other down to get to uh, to the point. It's it's a lot more joyful when we hold each other's hand and get to the destination. An IAWF leadership conference, which is coming up in Los Angeles, um, April 29th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. in Bonaventura, um, Western Bonaventure, right, in downtown L.A., and um, it's open to all. It's open to women, men, um, from um, all walks of life and all types of businesses and industries and uh, from all cultures. And um, the seminar is set up where we have a lot of different kind of panels where the panels are from uh, concept of art, uh, humanities, um, and uh, we even have a panel that talks about taboos, uh, about all that is have LGBT issues, mental health issues, um, the concept of the, the abuse, um, harassments that have happened, which are part of the existence of you know the conversation that is now here. So we go from success to vulnerabilities, and the expansion of um, the the strengths and um, how to go from vulnerability to resiliency to um, to uh, growth and acceptance of what is from intolerance to tolerance to acceptance of what is and I think that we have amazing amazing topics and conversations that open up um, not only your mind but your heart and your vision uh, Maya would you like to talk a little bit about the upcoming conference Sure. If um, if I may, I would like to share with your audience that we are delighted to have you, Bujan, as one of our speakers and panelists at one of our upcoming conference. Yes, I'm honored um, to be with part of all all of this. You were, you were, <laughs> and I thank you for that and for your continued support. Uh, as you already mentioned, uh, it's a whole day conference. It starts from. 8 o'clock in the morning um, to 5 o'clock um, in the afternoon. And we have about 8 to 10 different panels from unspoken taboos, which you just mentioned, uh, all the way to a road to justice paved by Iranian American judges. We are delighted to have a few judges within our community who are going to be there and join us. I'm sure so many of our younger generation attorneys and law students would love to be present at that particular session. 
um, we also have that. There is a panel which is I love it, and I try to have it at every conference in every city. Is um, about Iranian women, the philanthropists, those who are making a difference in this world, not just for our own community, but the community at large, and not just here in U.S. but globally in different countries. Uh, for this conference, we have uh, different speakers. They are coming from Northern California. They come from San Diego. They come from New York. Uh, each are going to talk about their passion for humanity, their passion to support uh, different causes, which is close to their heart. And I'm hoping by having and offering these um, panels in every city is that mainly um, we share with people that it's not that hard to get involved in philanthropy or you don't have to have money in order to contribute. There are so many different ways to make a difference and um, contribute to the society. Um, we have obviously panel about art because we want to make sure to pay attention to art and culture, which is very important to so many in our community. We are having a panel about our rising stars, uh, which I call it Rising Stars of Today and Leaders of Tomorrow. And those are individuals in their 30s who have achieved so much and it became successful and they are giving back to their societies. We want to hear from them and I'm hoping that this way we can inspire other other um, young individuals in our communities. Um, and of course, we're going to talk about um, overcoming obstacles because there are few speakers among us at that day uh, who have overcame obstacles that at the beginning, maybe when those things happened and those incidents happened in their lives, it was just unbelievable. They didn't think there is a tomorrow after that. They really uh, had a difficult time dealing with that. But no, after a few years passed or, and they overcame the obstacle and they just want to share that with the, with the audience. Uh, and again, it's not about talking and becoming victim of what has happened to them, but they are really inspiring women. I'm so proud to know them. And uh, I'm hoping that they can share experiences with us. Then we are going to talk about you know, how to deal with conflict resolution, how to write your resume, what you need to know if you go to a job interview. You know, there are so many different workshops that this year we are offering. It's kind of different than our previous conferences. Mm-hmm. We are adding more um, sessions or more workshops to our program. Mm-hmm. So not only that it's inspiration, but it's really action-oriented, coming to um, steps where you can actually g- hand in this, uh, give somebody the steps to take on the inspiration and uh, create the result. When you were talking, I remembered um, these, you know, I've been in the conferences for eight years, and it's just amazing to me where um, sometimes you see people where, for, for me, um, for example, success might mean a particular uh, concept. And then suddenly I'm listening to a woman where uh, how they raised themselves to a specific platform where uh, they are making a difference for a huge audience. And uh, then you look at, wow, the ceiling just rose. And then you have these 30-year-olds who come in And uh, the concept of think globally, act locally changes where you're acting globally immediately because of, you know, the, the technology that is available and the, the way that they look at things. It's no longer act locally. It's think globally, act globally immediately. And then suddenly again, the, you know, the ceiling rises again. And there's a vast, um, uh, imagination and creativity and not only as a vision but as results are in front of you and that to me is amazing especially um, for people who are into growth and wanting to raise uh, the ceiling where they can uh, create more results but also for the youth where 
they can really be inspired and have somebody not only in media or out there knowing, but is someone who they can come back and talk to, sit at the table with, uh, know that they're real. They're sitting right here. It's doable. I can. If this person did it and sitting in front of me and saying I did it with all the obstacles that maybe I can. And I think that's the biggest experience at 5 p.m. of each of these conferences where um, I've stood up and clapped and cried at every one of them anyway, mm-hmm. <laughs> that I've really, really experienced. Tell me about yours, Nushi. Um, well, as, as you mentioned, it's, 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 uh, that's basically why I, why I was saying also that the importance of this type of seminars is that you get exposed to what's happening not only in your own neighborhood, everywhere else, because these women come from everywhere, um, you know, globally. Some travel from Europe, some travel from, you know, Middle East, uh, and they're there and sharing their experiences and how they have made a difference. And as you said, you know, your the, 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 your world expands, you know, you at the, um, your your view uh, to the world and where you saw the problem and you th- you 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 thought you if you even thought that you're making a difference and you see what's out there and how much more is needed you think wow there is a lot more to do you know so it, it affects both ways you know it, you get inspired at the same time when you hear about um, how much need there are then you you get sad. I mean, you you it, as you said, the emotions are so mixed when you attend these seminars because you you are inspired by seeing how capabilities, how much capabilities are out there, and you get you you feel proud of um, uh, considering yourself as a fellow uh, Iranian American or Iranian wherever country they're residing in, and uh, you feel uh, you know proud that you are giving at just a bit as you know and but but when you see how much more people are doing and how much more effect they're making and how much need is out there you just all of a sudden feel like oh you feel so little Mm -hmm. you feel like there is so much more to do so hoping these type of seminars and these type of message passing will um uh, educate and uh, awaken people because this is more like awareness. Mm-hmm. As long as long as we bring awareness and education to people, we hope that we can make a better place for everyone to live. Absolutely. Um, we have about uh, three minutes, so I just want to make sure that people have access, uh, where to go, how to get the tickets, um, um, and uh, you know, join us uh, April 29th, April 29th, Sunday. Um, in Western Bonaventura, downtown Los Angeles. And uh, where do they go, Mariam? Uh, to our website, www.iawfoundation.org. IAWfoundation.org. And they can just um, have, uh, they can order the tickets right from the website, right? Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And we have a deadline. They can go right? online and purchase. Pardon me? Do we have a deadline? Uh, well, deadline for our early bird discount ticket is April 8th. So we are hoping that everybody can take advantage of that discounted rate by April 8th, which is $175 for the whole day conference, including lunch and all the sessions, everything. Beautiful. And I know that we have discounted rate for students and they actually need to go to the website and call your office if they if there are students, full time students. And uh, we love to have students and young um, adults to be there. We would love to have men and women there. I know in, in London we had the highest amount of uh, participants who are also men Um, so to have both men and women there from young to uh, seasoned uh, from people who are in um, businesses and uh, who are also uh, at home and have a lot of resources um, to be there to meet and join and we have about 800 people who are coming and uh, we're excited we're really excited to be there and um, uh, offer our hands to be together offer our hearts to be together our minds to be together business skills and uh, humanity skills let's say 
uh, for all of us to be there. Mariam, thank you so much for all you do, for um, your uh, heart and vision, uh, for all the hours that you put uh, to create a community, a community that gives um, to everyone and who you are for all of us in our community. Thank you, Nusheen, for joining me in the uh, in the office. I know you have not only your work, but also being a commissioner and uh, all the philanthropy and um, giving that you have. And then you brought you you came here, and you are hundred percent in so many different uh, from community from young children from political to immigration to women uh, and uh, your heart and, it, and and your reach is is large and vast so thank you both ladies for being here and letting our audience know that um, what they can um, what they can gain from being at this uh, conference thank you for having us it was a pleasure to spend the time here and uh, share the time with your listeners thank you last words thank you so much and thank you and for all of you who are listening with your heart thank you again I hope to see all or most of you April 29th at Bonaventura at downtown Los Angeles uh, go to at www.iawfoundation.org. Love to see you there. If you need to contact me, go to my website, fujan.com, F-O-O-J-A-N.com, and um, create a wonderful world and life for yourself and everyone around you. And until next week, bye-bye. You're listening to The Inner Voice with Dr. Fujan Zain, only on L.A. Talk Radio, 105.7.